As somebody who both purchases a good amount of shipped eggs for hatching, so I deal with a lot of chicken breeders, and as somebody who breeds and sells chickens myself and deals with a lot of people, I would like to discuss some chicken breeder hatching eggs chick buyer etiquette. I would like to help us all not get scammed, and I would like to help us all know what we're buying before we spend 100, 140 bucks on a dozen shipped eggs, only to be disappointed when they get to us. And there are some really simple ways to do that. There are different types of consumers in the chicken keeping market and different types of breeders in the chicken keeping market. But when it comes to people buying chickens, you either have your just backyard chicken raisers, people who just wanna have a couple chickens for their flocks so they can feed their families. You get people who are concerned with egg colors and they really want beautiful egg color baskets. Or you get people who are concerned about like, I mean, everybody's concerned about beautiful chickens, but you get people who want chickens who are closer to SOP. Knowing the kind of consumer that you are and the type of breeder that you're looking for may make a difference in your poultry shopping experience. It is always appropriate to ask for multiple colors of eggs, especially if you're primarily concerned with egg color, and to ask for colors of those eggs, like ask for pictures of those eggs in different lighting. And here's what I think happens sometimes, and I'm guilty of it too, we all do it. We all tend to take take pictures of our most beautiful eggs or our most beautiful chickens and post those on social media. And so if you can get a couple different pictures of a couple different collections, you can get an idea of if that breeder just has like one or two really dark brown laying uh, hens or if the flock in general has those really dark brown laying eggs. And that same theory holds true for olives, speckles, heavy blooms, really saturated blues. The other thing to consider is that a chicken carrying genetics for heavy blooms or speckles may not necessarily lay that egg every day. The point is, ask for all the pictures if that's something you're concerned about. If you're concerned about breeding towards SOP, ask for pictures of the bird, or in general, it is not unacceptable to ask for pictures of birds and multiple pictures of multiple different birds and different settings. And if a breeder doesn't have them or isn't willing to share those with you, that is a red flag for me. I don't care what time of year it is. I don't care if they're molting. My entire camera roll is filled with pictures of my birds. Like I have pictures and videos of my birds at any given time of the year, no matter what. And from various different stages of their life. As a consumer, when I'm looking to purchase, well, first of all, if I'm going to purchase eggs from somebody, I've done vetted them. I have checked their Facebook. I have checked business pages. I've checked a personal page if I can find it. I've checked a website if I can find it. And it's because I'm looking for all of the information that I'm sharing with you here to look out for. Different pictures of egg colors, different pictures of their stock. I'm interested in not just the stock that they're breeding with, but the stock that their parent stock has produced. One thing that that shows is that they've been working with their chickens for a period of time because I'm curious if they're new with these breeds or if they've been working with these breeds over a period of time. If they've been working with them for a couple years, chances are there's things that they're working on, there's things that they're working through, through. And personally, I like to buy from breeders like that. And of course, we all start somewhere. And when we're just getting started, of course, maybe we don't have years of references on a Facebook page or a website or whatever. And I would invite you to just be candid about that, you know, because there are people who are just getting started with their chickens who just want to be pet chicken owners and they don't care that you've been working on your lines for years or that you have F4 olives. They just want nice, pretty chickens. So there's a place for all of us in this game. Whether you're just getting started or whether you've been doing this for years, the point is to just be candid with people and be honest about where you're at and what you're working with. Allow the consumer to decide because I guarantee you they're going to be much more pissed off if they get bamboozled down the road. This business is a pretty small world. A lot of it is word of mouth. Okay, so as somebody who sells hatching eggs, I'm not working with chicks right now. I do wait lists. I have done wait lists. Also, people will contact me and say, hey, do you have this available? If I contact somebody and I say, hey, I came across your name on my wait list. I have these eggs available for you. I'm prepared to ship this week. I will allow about 24 hours. If I don't hear back from that person within 20 
24 hours, I just move on down the wait list. Or if somebody contacts me and they say, hey, do you have any black copper Moran's eggs available? And I say, yeah, I do. I can actually ship to you tomorrow. And they don't get back to me within like a couple hours and somebody else messages me for those eggs, I'm gonna sell them to the next person. And then if the original person messages me back and says, oh, hey, I have decided that I do want those eggs. I'll say, oh man, I didn't hear back from you. And I sold them to this other person that got in touch with me, but I'd be happy to put you on my contact list and contact you when the next dozen comes available. I would invite you to pay now so that as soon as that dozen comes available and give me your shipping information, I can just ship to you and send you tracking info and we can make it a smooth process. I don't hound people for money. I don't message people multiple times to see if they want my eggs. I just carry on about my business and let them do what they're comfortable with. As breeders, we can never guarantee hatch rates on shipped eggs. We can test fertilization within our flocks by cracking a couple eggs open regularly, and it's our responsibility to package those eggs as well as possible. Personally, I like to use foam shippers in a number four box. I like to double box that number four box into a number seven box, and that works really well for me. Sometimes eggs still get broken. Sometimes eggs still get shaken up sometimes. I don't understand it. I do the best I can, but once those eggs leave my hand, I have no control over how they're handled either by the post office or by the person who's incubating and hatching them. And that's why we can't guarantee hatch rates. So as a rule, I will not guarantee to replace any eggs that don't hatch. And that means any eggs that don't show viability. Now, I believe it is an appropriate assumption to where if a breeder is willing to send you additional eggs for whatever viability uh, issues, it seems appropriate to me that the buyer at the very least offers to pay for shipping again. Because again, it's really not the breeder's responsibility to ship out more eggs. And by buying shipped eggs, we assume responsibility for 0% hatch rates. Trust me, it has happened to me this year. Breeders who are NPIP certified are not going to let you take tours of their farms. It is a biosecurity risk and honestly just kind of risky in general. Even if I have people who are local to me and want to pick up chicks or hatching eggs locally, I will always meet them somewhere away from my house. And also finally, a little bit of understanding from both parties goes a long way. Can I confess to y'all that I sold somebody Black Copper Moran's hatching eggs at the beginning of the season and she sent me pictures of them recently and we're like, what do you think of these birds? And there were two olive acres in there, which meant that I mixed up two brown F1 olive acre eggs into her Black Copper Moran's dozen. I feel ashamed and embarrassed and I hate so much that that happened to her because I understand the time and energy that she put into raising those birds and they're probably like six months old now. And so anyways, she was really understanding. I was incredibly apologetic and we're gonna work it out. I'm gonna give her some free eggs. The point is she was very understanding with me. I'm very willing to rectify the situation and sometimes shit just happens and we have to be willing to work with each other to figure things out.